All right. Well, everybody, we got a special guest here today. My name's Mike. I'm with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters. And as you guys may or may not have known, but I've been doing videos on various uh, property damage, home insurance type claims from roof claims to fires to water damage. And then also uh, a lot of times covering topics within that specific field all having to do with homeowners insurance claims, property claims that could be damaged by a variety of things. So today we have a special guest. It'll be the first time on the channel that we bring somebody in. And Demi, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, give the people out there a little bit about your background, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate this opportunity to to be to be with you you know um and i've been um I, I was an independent adjuster for about a period of about five years with several companies you know when they say independent adjuster you know nobody is actually independent you know you're actually working for a particular insurance company and that's the that was the situation that i found myself but for that period of time, and you have to do exactly what they want you to do, you know. So, um, but I, I did that for about four years. Now I'm trying to transition into working as a public adjuster, you know. I just um, okay. I got my license. And, and you recently received your public adjuster license, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. I just, okay. I just, yeah, yeah. And I'm ready to transition into working as a public adjuster. Welcome to the good side. I think we're having a little bit of video issues, but hopefully it clears up. So you've been on the dark side for a few years, and I think this might be interesting for people to kind of understand. Um, let, let's start from the beginning, all right? I, I'm a homeowner. My name's Michael Smith. I call under my claim to my insurance company, all right? Whatever the claim is. But just for example, we'll use a roof claim. And um, and then they, they, they tell me that, all right, we're going to sign a field adjuster. Can you let people know how you get claims, what, by what means you get claims? In other words, is it email? Do you get a phone call from the insurance company? Who usually contacts you? Let people know, you know, right from the beginning, how this all originates and forms after they call in the claim. I think that's going to be a big help for people to understand this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That's a very good question. You know, what happens is uh, when you when you sign up with them. The first thing they do is that uh, based on your experience in dealing with it, with a with a client, they assign you a limited, you know, budget. You know, it may be ten thousand, maybe fifteen thousand. So if if they usually they send it to you by email, and once you get it, you call you call the client up and schedule an appointment to go to go do the inspection. You know, when you go do the inspection and you know, oh. You know, you, the, the inspection happened to be, you know, the claim happened to be about 40000 but your, your limited budget is only 10000 So you have to go back to the office and, you know, negotiate or they take the claim from you. That means you're not qualified to write that claim. You know, that's usually the process. Now, um, when you're assigned a claim, are you always assigned do they have special i want to say restrictions but instructions so in other words do some claims they just want you to take photographs some claims do they just want you to do an estimate some claims do they want you to do both photographs and estimates um and then also did you or do you have when you were an independent field adjuster any um authority to make a coverage decision usually you don't have any any authority whatsoever to do okay. anything yeah you know whatever whatever decision you make you have to run it by the by the supervisors 
That's the first thing. And um, there's a limited authority that all of them has. All the so-called field adjusters, independent adjusters have. You know, they yeah. can go beyond their authority. You know, so if um, if you if the claim happens to go beyond the authority, or in your opinion, you have to go beyond the authority, you have to you have to get um get an exception to that. You know, that's usually the case. And also, um, initially when you are not when you first started, you know, usually they assign you just inspection aspect of it. You just go there and do the inspection, or just go there and take the take the just take pictures, you know, okay. and you don't you don't file claims. You're not allowed to file claims. Would they also have you do in some cases write an estimate, or would they want you to report back first? Maybe take measurements and all that. Report back first to see if it's a covered claim before you do the estimate. No, that that depends on your experience. That depends on how long you've been with the with the company. You know, and um, if you've been with the company for quite some time, you know, they can expect for you to, to write the estimates, do the inspection, write the estimate, and do the whole, you know, do everything. However, you know, when you first started, when you're new, you know, they, they limit what your responsibilities are because they don't want you to go beyond that. You know, the most important thing is to be, to conform just to, to build a relationship with the clients. You know, they don't want you to be conf confrontational in any way. They want you to be in a very good relation, be in a very good rapport with the, with the clients. So public adjusters write estimates entirely different than anybody that works for an insurance company, um, including independent claim adjusters, right? So we tend to maybe put more possibilities of damage into the estimate, right? Whereas, as we all, as we know, and you'll probably learn if you haven't learned yet, Demi, but the insurance company, their field adjusters usually write a very low estimate, right? So, in, in your experience and the time that you were serving as an independent field adjuster with those writing an estimate, did, and, and I, I got to be cognizant of how I want to put this question too, but were, were you instructed by the insurance company to do certain things that estimate? So let's just say to include, somebody had hurricane damage, and the roof was damaged and they also had interior damage. Did they ever let you know or say, hey, do the inside, but don't do the roof because we're going to have an engineer come out or something to that effect. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that in more detail. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the limits, you know, it depends on your experience and how long you've been working for that particular company, you know, but sometimes it limits what you can do and what you cannot do. You know, you can just, or even if you if you go there and do everything, do the roof inspection, do the you know the damage, and they can still send somebody else, regardless of what your, you know, what your you know estimate or whatever you might have done in the past. They have the option to actually send somebody else over there, somebody who they're more comfortable with, or who okay. seems to. Have been, Quick question there. So let's say State Farm hires Demi. We want you to go out and take photographs of the insurance house. Just photographs. We don't want you to do an estimate. Um, we we don't want you to do whatever else the normal okay. independent adjusters do. What would happen if you were to say, well, it's really not worth a lot of my time. Or you say, well, why don't you want me to write an estimate? You know, there's something else that maybe you say, because correct me if I'm wrong, but the more activities you do, you'll get paid more, right? So if it's just photographs, you're only get get paid one particular price. And, and do you negotiate that price of the insurance company? Or is that something that they set for? 
I think usually from in my own case, it's something they already set for. They just pay you hourly. You know, how many hours you 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 work including the, driving? And including driving. They, okay. they pay you for the driving time. So if you if your activities is limited over there, you just, just get paid for the period that you were you were engaged to do whatever you were asked to do. And then back to um, and, and so what would happen in that question I asked, where they say, hey, Demi, we want you to go to, you're in Tampa, we want you to drive an hour and a half to Orlando, take pictures of the insurance house only, no estimate, whatever. What would, what would happen if you said, well, why? Or, you know, why, why can't I do the estimate? Or can I write the estimate too? If you, I don't want to say you're pushing back, but you're just questioning why only photos? What what would happen if anything? In other words, would the insurance company then say, "Hey, this is all we want you to do, and you're okay with it"? Um, because obviously, you need to make it worthwhile for you too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You should so, wait. Go ahead. Yeah. So, do, in other words, do you have to walk on your tiptoes with dealing with these insurance companies because there's hundreds of independent field adjusters right so the insurance companies probably want field adjusters they're going to obey what they tell them I, I guess it's probably the way to say it absolutely you know plus they already know people who will do exactly what they want them to do you know so they, in the first place they probably won't send you over there because they know you may not comply with what they want you to do you know and um when you ask them why can't you just do the inspection and do everything? You know, they can tell you, oh, okay, they want to send somebody who to them seems to be more experienced, you know? Is it, is it experience or somebody who they can manipulate to do what they want with a claim? For instance, if they know a person might be willing to change a claim amount or the estimate amount if it's too high. Right, because I'm sure that has happened with with I don't want to say you, but field adjusters in general, right? The insurance Absolutely. company, if you write too high of an estimate, they're gonna come back to you and say, Demi, why are you writing this high of an estimate? You gotta reduce it to X amount. Have has that well, I don't want have you heard it happen before? I don't want to see if it happens, you know. Say what what are the you have to justify. You just have to justify why you're writing such a high estimate. You know, you have to have reasons to justify that. If you don't have sufficient reason to justify that, they may not, you know, they may not allow it, or they may they may decide to send somebody else over there. Well, I haven't seen a high estimate written by a field adjuster in four years. So. Exactly, that's usually the case. You have to comply with what. Actually, they when you get started with them. They have to give you, they let you know exactly what they are, you know, what they're going to take and what they're not going to take, you know. So you have to be in line with them. Otherwise, you're not going to be, you're not going to be there for too long. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, what, what other experiences that, that you have had with the communication with the insurance company or your communication with the homeowner that, is paramount for the insurance company to make a claim decision. In other words, when you go to the client's home, a lot of times they want you to, to conduct some type of quote unquote interview to find out if the facts, and they'll tell you, I imagine the insurance company lets you know some of the facts of the claim beforehand. So you're going into Mike, uh, Mike Smith's house for a water damage claim. And I, had reported to the insurance company that I, I don't know what's causing a leak and you know I don't know how long it's been there. So they say, Demi, listen, we think this is a long-term leak. You know, we want you to ask these these type of questions, or do they even instruct you on what to ask and, and you just go in and ask whatever questions yourself? Actually, that's part of the initial training that we go through. You have to make inquiries, you have to ask questions. You know, and get down to the to the bottom line. How long has the as the as the problem persist? 
you know, before they call you. You know, you have to dig down with it. If so, before before you make the appointment, you're already talking about that. How long have you had this problem? You know, is this? Do you think it's something as a result of um of the age of the of the of the house? Do you think it's something that may be attributed to the to the you know to where you know to where where and tear? You know, you are trying to get to the bottom of that. That's a that's that's part that's part of the initial training that we get. You know, so yeah. to try to yes. To try to commit the the clients to you know to something they didn't they don't believe. So does each insurance company have different ways of of, for instance, in that particular situation where they want you to speak with the insurer to find out the facts and see if there's anything conflicting, right? So Absolutely. if I if I had reported a claim, Mike Smith, I reported a claim water damage. I think it's been there for a while. Do they ask you, or does an of the insurance companies you work with, will some of them potentially guide you in the questions to ask, or do they all pretty much let you handle the questions to ask the insured um, when you go to the house and when you do your field inspection? Oh yes, um, yeah, they do. They do encourage you to ask questions. You know, ask as much questions as possible, and try to get to the bottom of it. You know, does does, does each does have you noticed between the insurance companies that you worked with for though, and with, do some of them what do have some of them kind of, I guess, push some questions on you to ask the insured or guided you. Or have they all pretty much been consistent, all of meaning the insurance companies, that they just let you ask whatever questions you want and then report back to them? Well, they, they give you the, the luxury to ask questions that you want. You can ask as much questions as you want. You okay. know, but that's part of the initial training, you know, that we that we went through, you know, when you post that, you know, and they, they tell you exactly what you're what you're looking for. You know, say, you know, you're looking for conflicting stories, you know, that may arise. You know, this is what they report, and you're trying to dig further to try to see if there's any anything conflicting about what they had initially reported to you. So when um when you first started as an independent field adjuster, how did you get your foot into the door with some of these insurance companies? um they have some um agents you know oh, yeah. Some, yeah you go to the agents and um you know the agents hire on behalf of the insurance companies okay know? yes you know they have several agents now all over the country yeah and open, yes and and so when you start working at an insurance company obviously you start building up a rapport with the people in in the claims department whether that be the adjusters or the supervisors um once you build up that report will they assign you the claim on their own um do you know the process in that or do they still have to go through an agency and then you get assigned through the agency well they assign the insurance company assign you uh actually the agency send you to the insurance company and the insurance companies take they take over from there. They okay. assign you, they assign you the, the claims and you just go ahead. You know, that's that's after about a couple of weeks training. You know, they have to train you in their own way of doing things. And once you once they are comfortable with you, then they can send you to go, you know, send you to go estimate claims. So Tell me a little bit about, if you recall, some of the training you might have had without g giving too much info, right? But if there's some information that you feel comfortable sharing, that some of these insurance companies were training you, right? Um, was it something that I, I think that's been well known, but one thing I remember from way, way back when, when I worked for an insurance company and went into the field, they always trained us, don't be confrontational, right? Give people what they want to hear. 
tell them, yeah, you know what? There's, we're probably gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna write an estimate for your shower and the windows and the roof, and you know, we'll get back to you. And then people get the estimate, they're like, wait, you said you're gonna write for this, this, and this. You didn't write for it. But that's one thing that always stuck out of my mind is the don't be confrontational. And I've shared that, right? So this is why when the field adjusters come, they will appease a homeowner and they'll be very friendly to the homeowner because of that situation. So that's one thing that I learned. Um, so if there's anything that you want to share that maybe you had learned in, in the training for the insurance company. Now, I was a permanent employee, so I wasn't independent, but it'd be good to hear something from, you know, an independence point of view. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's actually, you know, common, you know, and you can go to somebody's house and try to, you know, get confrontational. You know, although they're very angry, they, you know, because of their loss and they want an immediate remedy to their loss. So when you go over there, they tell you, please, you, you're not going there to go to go get confrontational with anybody. So you have to appease them. You have to be, you know, agree to whatever they, whatever they say, you know, although even when you ask questions, you have to be very diplomatic in what questions you're asking, you know, and not get them, not get them angry, you know, always let them be on your side. You know, and that starts from the time you book the appointments. You know, you start from the time you book the appointment and you present yourself in a very, very friendly manner in everything that you do. So anything they ask you, you know, just acquiesce, just agree with it. Let's talk about estimates real quick. Yes. Um, who trained you to do estimates? Now, there's a program for everybody who doesn't know, call Xactimate, right? And mm -hmm. I imagine you were trained on Xactimate. Oh, yes. Um, so when it comes to writing estimates, did the insurance company train you at all for that? Or did you do that training on the side? Um, and is there ways that the insurance companies, whoever you work for, or maybe if you heard of any other independent field adjusters and or insurance companies that may kind of influence uh, insurance companies, influence field adjusters on how to write an estimate. Tell me a little bit about your experience with that, writing an estimate, where you learned it, and you know if any of it was through the insurance company, and then whether the insurance company really has any influence on you as far as the estimate that you would write. Actually, writing an estimate, you know, I learned that from the from the from some of the agents. You know, I took the exact exactimate class through the through the agents, you know, and it was actually because of that that I got employed, that I got employed by the by the insurance company, you know, because of the knowledge of this estimate, you know. And um usually so they recommend for you to to have that knowledge before before they recommend you before they you know they recommend you to the to the insurance company usually and that's usually the what the insurance companies are looking for you know for you to have the the knowledge of um, being able to write an estimate because they don't want to employ somebody who who is not you know who doesn't know how to how to write an estimate so you ought to have the knowledge first before you get employed you know, yeah. is uh, usually an advantage. Although they may they may hire other people for just to come take pictures or the ability to be able to, you know, the you know do the rope, you know, do the um, be able to get on the roof. You know, that depends on individuals. And and would the insurance companies ever um, kind of tell you how they like estimates to be written or um, what to include in estimates, what not to include in estimates, right? So let me give you an example. Um, a lot of times we put in content manipulation, 
for those that don't know, content manipulation is if you have couches all over the place and chairs, and then you move them around in boxes of stuff, right? So you're moving okay. around contents, and there's a line exactimate where you could put if you have to clear out a room, move a bed, okay, move dressers. It's all content manipulation. Something like that, where the insurance company ever mentioned, hey, don't put this item in there. Don't put that item. If it's if it's a roof, don't put in insulation. Okay. If it's a floor, don't put in the uh the the vapor barrier underneath there, right? A lot of these floors can have certain barriers for waterproofing, vapor, soundproof if you're in a condo. So I'm just wondering if they ever uh kind of guided you what to write, what to include, what not to include ever. Um and if so maybe some examples. Yeah, during the initial training, they tell you exactly what is necessary to include, you know. Based yeah. on a claim. So, for instance, if it was a roof claim, kind of what you should do versus, and then if it's a water claim, what you should do, like yeah, that. Exactly. exactly. And if it's uh, if it's too detailed for them, you know, they can take you out of the, you know, take you off and put somebody else in there. Somebody so when you say detailed. The only way you get details if you're putting a bunch of line items and exactimate and the estimate becomes big, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, you know, they're very cautious of that. You know, that's, you know, this guy may not know exactly what, what our requirements may be. So they, they remove you and put somebody else on the on the claim. You know, that's that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And and when that happens, more than likely you know what the reason is, right? Absolutely. The road is too high, mm -hmm. or there's something that they didn't like that you did that may have favored the homeowner, probably. Well, they will attribute all that to your experience that you you're not experienced enough. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, you know exactly what the what the what the problem is. Yeah, that's interesting. They use experience as the alibi. Absolutely. Yeah. Um so I, I think I want to do a couple more videos with you, Demi. I think the next one, what we'll do, I want to give people just kind of a taste on the role of a field adjuster, right? What what a field adjuster goes through, their relationship with the insurance company, um, and, and all these other features. And I think this is going to be a good start. And I think the next video, what we'll do is on roof claims, because obviously the two roof claims are the biggest number one claims that insurance companies have in our portfolio absolutely then comes water damage all right so i would like to hit on those two if you're available for a couple more videos then we'll do that but i think this is a good opening to give people an idea what you do the relationship between you and the insurance company and and also how there's a lot of stress put on you guys out there to kind of do what the insurance companies want you to do absolutely a lot of guys won't admit that and now you're on this side you can kind of open up a little bit right um anything else that you think might be helpful for people to know when they have a field adjuster inspection um whether that's advice you would want to give them or anything that might just help them in their claim or just how to deal with insurance companies and field adjusters? It's just uh, it's a good practice you not know, to, you know, to ask questions and to write, to have the adjusters write whatever they agree to, have it, have it put in writing. You know, they may not agree to recording. I would have preferred for them to re have them record the conversation, but have them put it in writing, whatever they agree to. You know, so that they can come back and say, oh, they never said that or they never, you know, that's usually the case, you know. So an example would be the field adjust is over, somebody has roof damage and they say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, good news. I'm going to write this roof damage for you. We're going to replace your roof, right? So you're saying get that, try to get that in writing from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and we you don't know have what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't know exactly what the estimate will be, but the replacement of the roof, just have them put it in writing. 
Okay, you said you're gonna yeah. do it, so there's no reason for you to now, you know, back away from that. If yeah, you said you're gonna do it. Let's put let's put it in writing and move yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, totally agree. Well, listen, Demi. Um, I know we've. I think we've been a little bit over a half hour already. So, uh, again, good introductory video to give people a little bit more insight on this. Absolutely. Um, I, I think these next two videos will be helpful for people as well, so that they understand from that point of view, not from my point of view. I'm just asking the question, so you're going to be a great resource for people kind of understand this and um i want to thank you for your participation today thank you for coming on board and see even though i'm a public adjuster and you used to be on the bad side i'm not mean to you am i no. <laughs> so, okay. so i i i want any field adjuster come on let's let's do it you know i i i, I say that with seriousness but i know none of them will come on because um I would have a lot of questions for them currently. Like why, when you write a $12,000 estimate, you know that's not the estimate of true damages and then it settles for 78,000. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, you know, I think some of those guys are currently working. I don't think for insurance companies, I don't think they would want to come on my- No, they're busy, they're busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, Debbie, hey, listen, th yeah. thank you so much for your time again, okay? Thank you. Thank you for bringing me on. I really appreciate that. I'm looking forward to working with you next time. All right. Very good. We'll do the Roof Claims uh, series next, all right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Have a good mm -hmm. night, Debbie. You, you too.